In this video, I want to show you how to replace your rear parking brake shoes located underneath your rear brake rotors. The process for this is the same for the passenger side. I'm going to go ahead and remove our center cap. Pop that off, set that aside. Using our 21 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove our lug nuts. With our lug nuts removed, go ahead and grab the wheel, remove it, and set it aside. On the back side of our brake caliper, there are two 15 millimeter bolts we want to loosen and remove. This lower one here, and then the one up on top. And spin that bolt out. Now we did go ahead and spray down our hardware with some rust penetrant to make things a little bit easier. Is our second bolt. Go ahead and set that aside. At this point here, we're gonna go ahead and use our pry tool. Go ahead and work our caliper off, gently wiggling that back and forth. And pop off the caliper. And we're gonna use our tool here to go ahead and hang this. We're gonna put it through the eyelet there for the bolt and just gonna pull us up top and set it up top, supporting this unit. Using our 18 millimeter socket with an extension, let's go ahead and loosen and remove our caliper bracket bolts. Go ahead and spin off that lower bolt, set that aside. Let's go ahead and repeat for the upper bolt. Now I'm holding the caliper bracket at this point here. You wanna be careful, because once you pull out this last bolt, like so, the caliper will be loose and it's gonna come out with your brake pads. Go ahead and slide that out and set that aside. At this point here, let's go ahead and grab our brake rotor and pull it off. It looks like our brake rotor is stuck on. It's probably held on by the e-brake shoes behind here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use a hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the back side of the rotor to try and work this off. and work the front a little bit. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses performing this job. So we're able to break the rotor free. Go ahead and pull that off and set it aside. Now on the back side here, we have a spring and we have the adjuster wheel with the little star wheel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try and move our adjuster wheel here to try and compress this threaded part into the adjuster. And ours is actually frozen. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and use our spring tool here with the hook. Gonna go on in, let's go ahead and pop that spring off. Set that aside. And use our tool here and just kind of open this up. Pop our adjuster out that is frozen. The next thing we're gonna do is we wanna go ahead and remove these little spring clips. There's one here on the top, there's gonna to be one on the bottom. And what you wanna do is basically just push this down, push that spring clip over so that that post or this little tab here comes out on the upper portion here. Now when that clip pops off, there is a post on the back side or a pin. You're gonna reach around the back side of the backing plate and you're gonna pull that out. And that is your pin right there. So that's what the clip locks onto. So let's go ahead and do the same for the bottom. Once we have these unclipped, let's go ahead to the other side and remove the main spring on the forward side of the shoes. So here is a spring on the forward side. Now both of our upper and lower shoes are loose. You could do one of two things. You could just kind of stretch these out and kind of work this off like so, which is probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Or you can try and pop that spring off using another tool, but that's pretty easy to do it that way there. And basically unhook the spring from your shoes. 
Once we have everything cleaned off, you want to go ahead and inspect your backing plate. Make sure the backing plate is nice and solid. And then we're going to go ahead and use a bristle brush and just clean up the scaly rust if you have that. If the backing plate is rusted or not solid, it's flexing around and cracking off, you definitely want to go ahead and replace this here. Ours is a little bit rusty, but it's definitely usable. Now on our particular vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and replace our spring kits and hardware with our rear shoes. It's not necessary. Our original hardware was still good, but if this is what you're doing, you wanna go ahead and start by addressing the adjuster here. Okay, we put our adjuster wheel or star on there. We're gonna put a little bit of grease in here and the purpose of that is to help with the adjuster wheel here so we're just going to get some grease on those threads higher up as well and that is your assembled adjuster. Now, if you're gonna be reusing this adjuster here, the adjuster wheel is frozen here, so we wanna go ahead and just pop off the bottom here. I'm gonna use a pair of locking pliers, and I want to grab the teeth. I don't wanna crush them, but you wanna go ahead and grab them so that it doesn't spin. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with a little bit of rust penetrant on here. It's always benefit, uh, beneficial if you can always get that on sooner. And we're gonna just go ahead and give this a few turns, see if you can loosen this up. I'm gonna spin right on down here. Ours was able to come off pretty quick. I'm gonna spin off the adjuster. I'm gonna go ahead and run this part of the adjuster through my wire wheel machine. You can use a bristle brush or whatever you have to go ahead and clean up those threads. You want that adjuster to be able to go all the way to the top. So if you just have something like this, go ahead and clean off that rusty, scaly stuff. Give it a good spray. And then work that adjuster back on. Now once you have everything loose and working good, we're just gonna throw a little bit of grease on that. You can use some anti-seize compound if you want. In our case here, we're just gonna use a little bit of grease. Go ahead and wipe off the excess. Spinning nice and freely. I'm gonna take some more grease, put it on the bottom portion here. And the reason why I wanna do this is that when we insert this into the bottom half, you want that to stay lubricated and smooth. And that adjuster is ready to install. And once you have all your pivot points and everything clean, you can go ahead and put a little bit of grease on these here. Take your lower shoe, take your spring, you wanna hook it in there. Grab the upper shoe, pop that on, and let's go ahead and stretch this up and over. Go ahead and pop this up and into place. All right, so we'll go ahead and get our shoes popped in there. Now the shoes are actually set in place on the forward section here. Now what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to get our lower spring mounted or a spring clip on our shoe. Now on the bottom side here, we have our pin and we have our spring clip. I wanna go ahead and get this pushed down and then pushed upward to lock it into place.
So we're on the back side, we're using a mini screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver to go on the back and apply pressure to the pin on here to push this pin outward. This is gonna allow us to get this lined up and push that on like that. Now on the back side here, we're gonna get to install our adjuster. Get that back brake shoe up onto the back and upper portion of the backing plate here. Now that we have the adjuster in, let's install our spring. Now we have our spring and our adjuster installed. I'm gonna go ahead and install our upper pin. Go ahead and put our pin in through the back side. It's gonna come through the front side of the shoe. So just reach around with one hand, hold pressure on that pin. line up the spring clip here all right gonna have our posts in there it is locked into place now you want to make sure that your e-brake shoes are both on the back part of the backing plate Kind of seat those in. Check your spring clips, making sure they're in all the way. We're good. Now before installing your brake rotor, you want to go ahead and clean off the surface of your hub here. We have a little bit of scaly rust on here, so we're just going to use a wire brush. You want to go ahead and clean this up. The reason for this here is you want to make sure when you put on your new brake rotor that this is all nice and flush. If you put your brake rotor on and there is a chunk of rust here, it's not going to sit flush. It's going to ride crooked. You're going to apply your brakes and the rotor is going to be wobbling around so you don't want that to happen you must have a smooth surface let's go ahead and clean this up once you have this cleaned up just give it a spray with some solvent here clean up that surface and we just wipe it down now take your brake rotor line that up and you want to slide this right on once you're working your brake rotor on, you want to go ahead and wiggle it back and forth. You want to see what kind of contact there is between the e-brake shoes and the inside of your brake rotor. Now ours is making some good contact right now. So what we're going to do is go ahead and adjust our adjuster wheel here. That'll close up our e-brake shoes and we'll be able to fit our rotor on nice and easy. Now when adjusting e-brake shoes, you have your adjuster wheel right here. You can use a flat blade tool to go ahead and rotate this here. Now rotating it one way will cause the shoes to expand, the other way will cause them to contract. We wanna go ahead and close these up a little bit so that we'll be able to slip our rotor on nice and easy. Here we go, our rotor slips on nice and easy. We have a little bit of play here. and we're spinning freely. So our rotor is good and our e-brakes are adjusted. Take your caliper bracket, slide that over your caliper and we're gonna go ahead and get the upper bolt started first. Once we get this started a few threads, we're gonna go ahead and install the lower bolt. With both of these started, let's go ahead and snug those down. Go ahead and snug both of these down good and torque these bolts down to 96 foot pounds let's 
go ahead and remove our support strap here holding our caliper in place. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and compress this piston back into the caliper itself. We're going to use our tool here to go ahead and do so. I'm going to do this slow and it's going to push this piston back in, pushing the fluid back up into the lines. Go ahead and remove the tool and set your caliper aside. Now we're going to install our brake pads. All right, once we have this side in here, go ahead and repeat for the back side. Go ahead and bring your caliper down into place. Slide that over and get your caliper bolts started. And once you get both of those in, let's go ahead and snug them down. Let's torque down our bolts to 23 foot pounds. We repeat for the upper. Let's go ahead and install your wheel. I'm going to go ahead and get all of our lug nuts started by hand. Once we get these on, we'll snug them down. Go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 110 foot-pounds. Once we have those torqued, I'm going to go ahead and install our center cap. And you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.